Welcome to your walkthrough in your Essex 2024 4551 floor plan. If you come up here, we're going to go through the controls here in the cockpit area. Okay, so when you come in the coach now and you're ready to run the slide outs extended, you want to make sure that you're on air ride so that your coach is completely aired up. Uh, then you would run the slide outs, and then you would level. So let's do it in that order. It's you open this, or we are on the air. Our coach is aired up. And you can see here, you've got this warning. Be sure both driver and passenger seats are in the forward position before activating slide out room. So just make sure that the back of the seat, this armrest, or anything uh, that might be in the way is clear. If you need to move it forward, just you know, move it forward a little bit. Then you can come over here and you can go to driver's side slide out, and then you would press out. And of course, you wanna make sure there's nothing on the outside before you um, break have to press and hold it until it goes all the way out. It will automatically shut off. It then goes out and then it drops down and level with the floor. I continue to press and hold and it automatically shuts off even though I'm still pressing. Now I can release because it shut off. Okay. Extended the full wall slide. Now we're going to extend the kitchen slide. It's the same way. We want to make sure and look visually, make sure we have clearance here between the back of the seat and the stand. Then we come over here, make sure we're on air like we did for the other slide. We go passenger side slide out and you press it in the out direction. <laughs> This is an electric slide. The slide will automatically stop just like the full wall did. And then we can release the button here on the OD. The HWH leveling. And as we showed you a little earlier, we want to be sure that we have already run the slide outs in the extended position on air. And then we would level. And this is your touchpad for HWH leveling here. And to power this leveling control up, you just reach over and turn the ignition on or turn it to accessories. And you'll see you get additional uh, lights that come on here that indicate we're slightly off level. And to level the coach, um, you can do it manually by pressing these buttons for extend and retract or you can just hit the auto level button. Now, before you put your coach uh, into auto level or um, you do it manually, you're gonna want to walk around the coach and just make sure that there's nothing underneath where the jack uh, uh, pads are gonna be extending towards the ground. And you also wanna check the reveals on your slide out make sure that your slide out reveals are about an eighth inch or excuse me make sure that your slide out reveals are three eighths of an inch and then you'll be able to go into auto level after you've run your slide rooms out so leveling should only take place after you've checked your reveals and made sure that you can run your slide rooms out after the slide rooms are out, then you'd want to go into the leveling process. So to do that, you'll turn the key on, hit auto level. And what you're hearing is the air going out of the bags as the coach is going into the leveling process. It takes a minute or two uh, to go through the complete leveling cycle. And once each 
jack is down, you'll see a red light that comes on to tell you that that jack in that corner is down. So you can see the coach is slightly moving as the jacks are going down. If the area that you're on has too much of a slope, then the excess slope light would come on. And then you'd have to move your coach to a more level position. But we're good here because the excess slope light is not on. If at any time during this process, you want the jacks to um, store, and go back up, you would just hit auto store. But now you can see all of our jacks are down and our yellow lights are off, the showing, up, showing us that we're in a level position. So now we can turn off the ignition. And what you were hearing there was a, a warning signal that the ignition was on. Uh, while it was in the leveling process because the air wasn't in the airbags anymore. So now we're level and we'll do the exact reverse process for auto store that we did when we ran our slides out. So to go into auto store and bring the jacks up, we turn the key on, let the coach air up, run the slide rooms in, and then after the slides were in, then we would go into auto store. So we'll show you that. Turn the key on. After the coach is aired up, then you would go into auto store. As each jack retracts in the corner of your coach, when it's fully retracted, the light will go out. So before you travel, you wanna make sure all your red lights are out. All right, so your last jack is up. The jack warning sound has gone away. And once you have full air in your airbags, you'll be able to travel. So uh, right now um, it's showing that we have auto stored. Again, if you at any time wanted to, you could extend or retract these manually, uh, but it's just about as easy to use the auto level and then auto store button to level. Just in front of the HWH leveling pad, you've got your gear shift for drive, neutral, and reverse. If I turn on the ignition switch, you'll see that it lights up and we're in the neutral position. So each time I change uh, to drive, for instance, it's going to show a number, the gear that I'm in. So in reverse, it's going to show R. And as the transmission warms up, I'll be able to click on mode and it will show me temperatures and or any faults. This is your tag dump. To have it work in the auto position in reverse, you want to have it towards the front or on auto. To manually dump, it's momentary switch towards the back. The switch in the center is your engine brake on and off. And once this is turned on, you can adjust it to low, medium, or high. The engine brake uses the exhaust to help slow the coach down uh, instead of using a brake force with your brake pedal. We have our cup holders here. Uh, moving forward, you have your phone charger here. Just above the phone charger, you've got your parking brake. The parking brake 
needs to be pulled to apply it. So right now it's pulled towards you uh, to release it. You push it forward or push it in and that releases the parking brake. Just to the right hand side of that is your mirrors, left and right. To adjust your mirrors, you just press left or right, up or down, and that adjusts your mirrors. If the mirrors are frosted or foggy, you can turn this small red switch on that will melt or defog the uh, rear view mirrors off if they're not. So if you want your headlights to come on automatically, this first switch will um, allow the lights to come on, headlights to come on automatically. If you want to turn the lights on at any time, you can do that here with this switch, turning your headlights on or off. And of course, this is your fog lights on and off. If you want to just dim the backlighting, you can just go dimmer or brighter. And this is your dome light on and off. Leave it on. Too. And this is for your high beams. You can see auto high beams, cancel is down, resume is on. So that way you don't have to uh, adjust your high beams with the manual control. You can do it either way. Uh, the ATC automatic traction control override is here. That's on and momentary is off. Your window here on the driver's side, open and close. And you can select air horn or street horn here. Just to the right of that, you've got your louver vents here in the dash. And in the center is your glass dash. When you make the controls on your instrument cluster here, when you change settings, they will appear in the glass dash. But just before we go through these controls, we're going to just go through uh, what the indicators are. Obviously, the temperature, fuel, diesel fuel, engine temperature, oil pressure. Uh, this is a warning that we're not at ride height currently. This is the mobile eye, the one in the center of the windshield here. This is telling you uh, if you're in your lane, it gives you lane warnings. Uh, you have to be over about 15 miles an hour for that to work. This is your uh, air pressure front and rear for your airbags. Air tank. Excuse me. Air. This is your air tanks pressure gauges front and rear. And of course your DEF and time. This is your RPMs. This is your miles per hour. You can change these to kilometers per hour if you like. Now we'll go through what appears in the center here. Uh, with the selections, uh, those selections can be made here on the right hand side. The home screen is, is what you're seeing here. As you scroll up or down with the up or down arrows, you can make selections. For instance, my TPMS, what is it? Tire pressure monitor system. And it shows me what pressure are in my tires. Once I've made that selection or scrolled to that arrow, I can press OK and you can see it changes from my PSI settings to temperature settings. So now it's showing the temperatures that are in the tires. And it works similar for all the settings. Like say I, I scroll up to trip. Now it shows me my last trip A. If I press the OK again, it's going to show me trip B. So. Um, those uh, settings are all fairly similar. Pressing the OK, once you make that selection, now you can make the adjustments to either one of those selections. Their collision avoidance uh, system is not uh, on right now. That's what it's showing you here. The return arrow on the side of, just beside the OK, just takes you back to the previous screen. So that's the right hand cluster. Just to the side of the right hand cluster, uh, you'll see here if I move these arrows, my pedals are moving. So if I move that arrow, or if I move this small lever, my pedal is moving forward or back, adjusting both the accelerator, ex 
accelerator pedal and the brake pedal. Uh, the one on the top is for my comfort steer or comfort drive. It helps give me more um, uh, help with the turning when I adjust it to higher and lower settings here. I like it in the mid range about three. <clears throat> on the left hand cluster, you've got your windshield wipers on and off high and low, intermittent. Once you press the intermittent and then you wait so many seconds, if you press it again, that's how long it will be intermittent between wiping uh, of the wipers. Making telephone calls here and the two uh, selections on tilt for the wheel here and telescoping. And of course the turn signal left and right when the left turn signal is on, the left camera comes on so that you can see in that lane, and same with the right turn signal. Cruise control is here. To set the cruise, press in, turn on, and resume. And of course, we showed earlier, this is the dim or bright for your headlights. The emergency flashers are here. You can see if we pull that chrome lever out, our emergency flashers come on. To turn them off, just turn the turn signal in either direction and the emergency uh, flashers will go out. Down on the left-hand side of the column here, there's a small button about 10 inches off of the floor. If I press that button, I can reset the entrance code on the Trimark door handle. Just refer to your owner's manual for more instructions. You have a USB charge port here and a USB connection uh, to your uh, radio core here. So you'll see a selection here that you can set for driver position of the steering wheel adjustments along with the mirrors and there's pedal. and the pedals so we can uh, make an adjustment and then once we hit set number one then the pedals the mirrors and the steering wheel will all be set in that position so when you come back to drive you can just choose one two or three and it will go back to that setting so at the center of the dash area, we have our uh, split views. This, this is the camera control uh, screen that we're on now. It's all turned on and off here uh, with this button. And for the camera selection, it's turned on and off here. So when we first come in the coach, we'll have to turn it on. Press, release, press, release. Okay, so this turns on our radio core. And then this infotainment screen comes up and gives you all the selections that you can make. Uh, some of the selections that are here for navigation or camera, uh, those also appear in the menu. So if you press menu, you'll see navigation is there. If you press menu again, you'll see that camera is there. So these are shortcuts to your navigation or camera. But when you're in the menu selection mode, you can choose radio and bands, media center, uh, Sirius XM. You also have Bluetooth selection. Once you choose Bluetooth, you'll have to use this on your Bluetooth ID with your phone. So when you are using your phone to make uh, telephone calls, it will pair with the radio core. Once it pairs with the core, then you'll be able to press uh, the hands-free option here to make a call or hang up. But you'll have to go to your Bluetooth selection and choose this icon to pair with this radio. Back to the menu screen, we have our HDMI. Nothing connected there. 
auxiliary camera control again we saw that in navigation this is the mobile eye uh, the mobile eye uh, can be seen here as well as in the main glass dash and of course our setup screen when we first set up the radio there is a uh, favorites button and it's selected for Sirius XM right now. On the right hand screen is the camera. So if we go to camera, we can select uh, side view or 360. Now you can see 360 around, or we can go front view. So all the camera selections are here. For the rear view, you can zoom in. Um, or zoom out here. In addition to the camera selections and zooming in and out, there's settings uh, that you can scroll to, dimming. You can change the dim set, brightness, contrast, color. Just below our screens, we have our, our controls for our battery boost. If our house batteries or chassis batteries are low, we can connect them just by pressing and holding. It will connect with the other battery bank to boost either the house or the chassis batteries. If we need to say, uh, start the engine, but we're low on chassis voltage, we just press chassis and we'll get a boost of energy. We have to hold that down for about 60 seconds and that will boost our batteries. Just beside that, we have our, our uh, for heavy tow, on or off. We have our front overhead fans, or excuse me, this one is the front fans here at the floor level. These uh, will only come on in heat near the floor here if the ITR Oasis is on, and that's not on right now, so these fans aren't coming on. There's low, high. The overhead fans will come on now, and you can adjust those to high, medium, and low. They help defrost the windshield. You have your docking light switch on and off, as well as your courtesy lights on and off. The generator can be started right here. Once the generator starts, then you can just stop it here. We'll let it go ahead and start and then stop. And we can lock the entrance door here or unlock. Our visors and our shade controls are here. And below that, we have our HVAC system for the cockpit area only. Uh, obviously, this is to the right is warm, to the left is cooler and you will need to turn on uh, the snowflake for cooling. This is the recirculation and this is the fan screen. Adjusting towards defrost or other positions is right here. Just below that we have two additional drawers for storage here and here and of course the louvers for the heating fan are down there. So in the driver's overhead, if we open this up, we'll see we have um, a bunch of extra controls here. Uh, just starting from the top left, this is your Wi-Fi router. Uh, the Wi-Fi router uh, will connect uh, to your, um, your phone or other computers in the coach, and that has an outside antenna on the roof. Um, your power over ethernet there for your cameras, your 120 volt outlet here. Uh, if you need to plug something in up here, you have your uh, momentary or your, you have your video switch uh, for your Rosie to turn it on and off. And you have your HWH reset that you'll need to press for five seconds to reset the HWH system if you need to. Uh, here we have your Weingard antenna. This is for outside over the air antenna. Uh, just turn it on here. 
and it scans and uh, loads channels. You'll need to do that whenever you move into a, a new area. You'll have to rescan. Um, you can hit search again if you feel you didn't get enough channels to begin with, or you can make small adjustments here to move the antenna once it's locked into a channel. If you're not watching over the air TV and you want to watch cable, you'll need to turn this off. Just press here, turn that off, and then you'll be able to watch cable. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get your cable to, to come in to you. This is your Gerard awning control, same as the one that you saw earlier in the video outside, which is your remote control. You have all those same controls here. And we talked a little bit about the slide uh, slide controls here for the driver's side and the passenger slide outs, in and out for both. Your exterior LED lights in the front, um, the entrance step override here, and this is the Wi-Fi router power for this router here. So you'll have to have that on for your Wi-Fi uh, to be turned on and powered up. You have your security sensors here. This is optional equipment. Uh, and this coach happens to have the security sensors installed. Driver security lights, passenger security lights, and the driver drape, the front privacy drape, the door drape, and the passenger drape. So these are all drapes or shades. This is a connection for uh, the technician to use and check your RVC network with the Omniscope. You won't need that. You won't need to open that, but that's what it's for. And this is similar to a battery disconnect. This turns the battery management system off and on. If we would press and hold that for a second, all the lights would go out because we're disconnecting our battery. If this happens to go out and you are dry camping, uh, that would typically mean uh, that your battery dropped below 10%. If that happens, you should turn your generator on and then press this again to turn this back on and let your battery charge up. So again, if this goes out and you're using your coach and you lose power, that's warning you that you're at your last 10% of battery power storage in your lithium battery. Uh, the BMS is helping you save the life of it uh, until you either plug into shore power or turn your generator on, making sure that your inverter uh, is turned on to charge so that battery uh, gets refilled with energy. So moving over into the uh, passenger side, we've got our television. Uh, we have more overhead storage. And... In these two cabinets, we have the controls. Uh, these are for the remote control of the three Girard awnings. Uh, if in the event you might misplace your remote control, you can either operate it in that overhead, or if you wanted to, you could actually press these on the side of either of these uh, con controls and it will open and close or the center position is stop for the door awning and the two patio awnings. You'll notice that they are plugged in to 120 volts because the motor that operates those awnings is a 120 volt motor. Since it requires 120 volts to open and close the door or patio awnings, you either need to be plugged into shore power or you'll need to have your inverters enabled so that they can operate um, the awnings open and closed. Okay, so at the passenger seat, you'll see an additional screen. This screen just mirrors the screen that's at the driver's location. This one shows your camera selections. Uh, you can go to your navigation screen and the 
driver will have to accept the conditions. And then once they do, then you'll be able to navigate. So now we can choose our destination. This is a, just a buddy screen, uh, which will help the passenger navigate or go through camera selections uh, in the passenger side. Just below that, we've got another phone charger. And these rocker switches control your patio light, white or amber color, your visor, up or down, your step cover, we'll show you that in a second, uh, step lighting on and off, ceiling light on and off, and your map light on and off. For the step cover, where I'm standing here, there's an actual cover that can come out so that I can stand level with the floor. So if I move out of here and I press my step cover, it will come out and it will lift up so that it's even with the floor. Just press and hold that button until it stops to retract it just the opposite direction. And below our armrest area, we have our battery disconnect here, which we can turn on when we enter the coach. So we have lighting and we have our baggage lock and unlock here. Just below that, we have our fire extinguisher. So to adjust either seat, driver or passenger, the controls are uh, pretty much the same. This is forward and reverse and tilt. This is for our footrest. To extend the footrest, just press. Retract. And the seat will tilt. And if we'd like to rotate either seat out into the living room area, we can do that. We just want to make sure that we have it tilted forward and that we have the seat a little bit forward this way. There's a release on the opposite side of the chair. So move this out of the way. Now we'll be able to rotate this seat just by releasing the lever here. Release the lever and I can rotate the seat around to the living area here. So this is the lever that I had to lift up so that the seat would release. There's also a lumbar control so we can have more lumbar support here and this is the the seat heat so i can do seat heat here three is the hottest and then there's off when you're finished you can just rotate the seat back around and it locks back into place now i can store my tray And the driver's seat works the same way, except uh, the seat on the driver's side will not extend the footrest if the parking brake is released. And it does not have a table tray. One, one additional adjustment that you can make is the armrest. So if you have the armrest here, but you like it up a little bit at the very front, you can reach your finger in this small slot, lift up, now you can adjust it to a different position and it locks into place. Or just lift it out of the way when you're ready to move out the seat. So as we 
move back behind the passenger seat, we see a HVAC temperature sensor for the front zone of the coach. We have our touch panel for our lights, and those lights, lighting controls uh, for the bathroom and the bedroom. Um, all lights on and off is here, so you can control all the lights on and off when you come in, or you can just control it slightly dimmer over here here. If you choose the home selection, you'll see it gives you more menu to look at. It gives you shades, fans, uh, systems, monitor panel levels, window awnings, uh, and display of brightness. If you don't understand what one of those are, uh, you can press the I and then Let's say the shades, if you don't understand the shades, and it'll give you directions. So if you just follow the directions and then scroll over, um, it gives you additional ones for the shades. So as you go back, just hit the home screen. But again, uh, once you go to the home screen, you can choose a selection, let's say for the fans. Now I can turn the uh, fans in the kitchen, the bathroom, or the rear bedroom on to high, medium, or low uh, for any of those rooms. Below that, we have our 120 volt plug, our day stand here, another panel for lighting and systems control, let's say we wanted to uh, raise the TV stand, we can go to our home screen and go to systems, and we see our TV lift is there. Press our TV lift and the TV lift goes up. While that's going up, we'll show you how this uh, sofa folds out into a bed. You'll need to pull these off of the Velcro There's a release handle in the center here, so you lift up on the release here, and it pulls out, and then you can fold it out into a bed. The legs come down, and then you just fold this back down. There's your sleep, uh, sleeper sofa. When you're ready to store, just lift up again. And same, you can lift up here in the center to close. And then just put your seat back cushions back on Velcro side to the back. In the overhead cabinets, we have storage here of our Bose speaker. Just below that, we have our AV or audio visual cabinet where we can put our receivers for Blu-ray and or satellite. Um, and those cables are marked here. Source. Blu-ray DVD, and for each of those receivers, there's a 120 volt outlet, and we have more storage space over here. Once we get our TV in the up position, we would want to scan either for cable or for over-the-air channels. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center that gets to this screen. And then this icon here is our selection for menus. So just uh, toggle over to the left here 
and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings, then press the center button here. And now scroll over. To all settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels. If we scroll down here to broadcasting, then we select that. Press the center button again, and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program, and we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on. And once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes. And It'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. Thirty nine channels. So we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the WineGuard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channel. So if you want to scan for cable, turn the over the air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting, auto program, and this time we want to, we're plugged into cable, we've turned our over the air. Um, WineGuard off, and now we can scan for the cable channels. Obviously, since we are not plugged into cable, we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable. And you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. Okay, so we're standing in the living room area uh, at the drop ceiling. And you'll notice the louvers uh, or the air slots where the air conditioning and the heat come from the roof or the heat pump air conditioners. Inside of this is a series of filters that you'll need to keep clean. And with your coach, you'll get this device, which is a tool. So you'll have this special tool that comes with your coach that you'll have to insert into the slot, if you move to the fourth slot back and insert it, you'll miss the magnet. So then you can pull down, and now, you're be, now you'll be able to access the filters that are inside for the air conditioning and the heat pump. You just reach, in, reach inside and pull down these louvers here, and you'll remove the filter and uh, you can uh, clean it with the uh, compressed air, or you can uh, just go to the sink and clean it with uh, water. Once you let it air dry, just put it back on and then reinsert it. And you'll need to do that to each one of the filters. So there's five here, and then of course they're in the back bedroom as well. Once you're done cleaning the filters, which you should do, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> once you're done cleaning the filters, which you should do weekly, you'll just push this back up and the magnets will catch and hold it in place. So as we move into the kitchen area, you can see we have uh, cabinet space. Uh, 
beside and above the microwave. The microwave has its 120 volt plug here. So you'll need to make sure that the microwave is plugged in in this cabinet just to the right side of the microwave. You have extra drawer space here. And with every Newmark coach, you get the information packet. In this information packet, you have um, paperwork for your plumbing, uh, HVAC, exterior, uh, your electrical, and all your appliances, all your warranty registration information, uh, your website's information, your Numars operator's manual. And so you should review this large packet of information and go ahead and send in your warranty registration forms. Either do that uh, by the mail or you can do that online. On the inside door, Numar uh, has the data tags for your paint, information on the country club, uh, has your model serial number of the coach, VIN number of your coach, um, and the gross vehicle weight information there on the inside of the door. Just below that, you've got your touch panel for controlling lights and systems. Your sink here in the kitchen. Uh, when you take these covers off, you can store them right here. There's uh, Velcro slots that you can insert right here. And store those in the lower cabinet. Has another pull-out drawer there and here. More storage with a drawer here. Uh, the sink uh, is telescoping here with the sprayer. In this drawer, we have all of our remotes for our bows and our TVs and the awning as well as the bed. You have your wrench for your water filter along with other small accessories tool for removing the overhead louver so you can get into cleaning your filters for your HVAC. And your dishwasher is here with your energy guide. Uh, it's currently locked. To unlock it, just tap. It unlocks. And then your settings are on the inside of the door here. So you can make all your settings here. Then you close to wash or rinse. Just above that, the cooktop has covers that have cutting board on the back side. So you have cutting boards on both of those covers. Uh, the range is a Bosch. So the cooktop is one that you'll have to turn on. You have to be plugged into shore power in order for it to work because it doesn't run off the inverter. The on off switch is here. And you'll have to use a magnetic pan in order for this range top to work. So once you set a pan here, it senses that it's magnetic and then you can adjust the temperature you want to operate. When you're finished using the cooktop, make sure that it's cooled down. And then you can put the covers back. The rounded corners go on the outsides. Okay. 
The drawers here can be pulled out so you have extra countertop space. There's a release button right here. If you press that, this will slide out and give you more room in the kitchen for your countertop. And when you're done, just push it in and it will lock back into place. Across from the TV and the AV cabinet, you have your theater seating. The theater seating is adjustable. So when you sit down, the adjustment is the one button nearest you. So you can press that to extend your footrest and tilt back. And then to retract it, it's just the button right beside it in the center to retract. And there is backlighting on each one of the cup holders on and off. Inside the center console, there's more storage space here with a sliding drawer. And to the left side here, you have your touch panel control where you can uh, adjust any function in the coach. Again, going to the home screen, you can see all the selections here, lighting shades, fans, uh, systems. If you were sitting here and wanted to watch TV, you would just hit the TV lift up and your TV lift goes up. When you're done watching television, you just press TV lift down and it goes down. There's additional cabinet space above the theater seating here. And moving into the kitchen area, you've got your dinette. Uh, the dinette table is one that you can expand just by pulling it out and you can add a leaf and the chairs are in the bedroom. Let's show you how that works. So to add uh, extra leaf, there are two. You can add one or two. You wanna line up the slot, the steel slots with the ones in the pull table. So that would go this way. Once those are lined up, you can close it again for extra space. Now you have your seating. So after you close the table, if you use a second leaf, you're want, you want to use the extra leg in case you have the extra weight there to support it. There's a leg that's on the bottom here. So since you're going to have this extended, there is a leg that you can pull down. It's a extra or third leg. It's a magnetic catch, so you just pull that, push it down, and then you can move that leg into position here so that when you close the table, you'll have that for extra weight. When you're finished, you can lift that leg back up. The magnet will catch it. Then we can remove our leaf and close the table. There is additional storage space under the dinette seating here and here. As soon as they close, they lock. more storage space above. And another control panel for your lighting and systems here. So we're here at your Bosch refrigerator, the Bosch refrigerator, stainless steel. It has a door lock here. So if the door lock is engaged, that would be for travel. So uh, it locks all three doors so they don't open 
as you're going down the highway or making a turn. To unlock the doors, you have to move this lock to the right. It's a manual lock. Now you can open the refrigerator. We just turned it on, so uh, you'll have to go to the menu, uh, choose your settings. It also gives you the refrigerator temperatures and the freezer temperature. Uh, gives you other selections here that you can refer to your owner's manual for ECO or vacation mode. You'll need to insert your water filter up here in this corner. So you just pull this back, this comes down, and then you just insert your water filter and then close this again. For the freezer, you just pull it out and there's a secondary drawer here. To access the ice maker, there's another panel here that you can pull out here. And then you have your ice maker here. The ice goes through the chute here when you select either cubed or crushed. And of course, this is the water dispenser here for bottle fill. When you're ready to travel, just lock the doors again. Make sure they won't open while you're in transit. Just to the left of that is your pantry. The pantry drawers can be adjusted uh, to where you like, as well as the ones on the bottom can adjust those slides to open the so to open the drawers just grab a hold and pull to unlock and open and then push to lock when the coach is uh, when the coach is ready to travel and you press the release parking brake this rotates over and locks these into place so it's an automatic lock that Numar installs to keep these trays uh, from moving while you're in transit. Then when you come to park and you put your parking brake back on, this releases so you can open the drawers. So just as we move into the hallway uh, before the half bath, you'll see a touch panel here that illuminates when you touch it. Uh, this is your Silverleaf screen. This screen will allow you to control the functions in your coach. So we have those functions labeled on the outside perimeter. And then when you choose one of the outside selections, it appears in the center of the screen. So starting at the top left is the dimmer. So you can turn uh, the screen a little bit dimmer if it's later in the evening um, or brighter, whichever you choose. Uh, at the very top, it gives you the date and the temperature. And there's a gear icon. We'll get to that a little bit later. But at the home screen, the home screen is going to display in the center uh, what your tank levels are, what your battery is, uh, whether the uh, batteries are bridged together and char helping each other charge. It uh, also shows our gen set, leg one and two, and our shore power. So as you can see, we're not plugged into shore power. Um, our house batteries are at 85% state of charge. Our chassis batteries at 13.2, and our tanks are all empty. And that's pretty much the way Whenever we make a selection, it's just going to show in the AC power selection. We don't have power on leg one or two. Our inverters are off because we're not plugged in and they're not working. So scrolling on down to DC power, we've got uh, DC means direct current. Direct current comes from our batteries. Our batteries are showing that they're 85% charged and we have 13.1 volts. These batteries are lithium. Lithium batteries always stay at about 13 volts. 
uh, unlike what you were seeing uh, before, um, our chassis batteries are a uh, AGM type battery, so they show a voltage where the house batteries will show a percentage of overall state of charge. Moving on to our generator, we've got our manual start, manual stop. So if we need to turn our generator on, we can do that here. And it also shows uh, whether those are locked out. It shows activity flags uh, and you know anything that's on will be circled in blue for your generator. We can go to our AGS settings. We can turn our AGS on. It's disabled. So one of the things you wanna be sure to do if you turn your AGS on is enable it so that the generator can come on when the batteries fall below 30% state of charge. That's something key to remember. In your water, if you select your water uh, button, you're gonna show all of the items that relate to your fresh tank or your other tanks, water pump on and off switch. We can turn our water pump on and off from here or the auto fill. If we move to our climate, that relates to all the temperature settings, whether our um, heat or cool is turned on or off, we have to make those selections here. Um, it shows all zones uh, here, meaning living room, bath, and bed. So we can select cool, auto, or heat. Auto is just a, an automatic setting where you choose a temperature you want and it will select between the cooling and the heat, whether that's the heat pump or the air conditioning. So if you select heat, you're going to have to turn the Oasis on. The Oasis is your hydronic heater for your water heat and your air heat. So you need to turn your burner on here or off here. And you can also select the electric elements, which give you some uh, hot water and some heat, but not uh, a lot for the heat. It does, it does heat all your water, but if you're selecting the elements and you're gonna take a long hot shower or you need a lot of heat because it's a really cold day, you wanna make sure your burner is turned on. We can select individual zones, or we can select the entire coach by pressing all when we're in the climate mode. So refer to your owner's manual for more information, but when any one of those cooling or heating functions come on, you're gonna see that icon is highlighted with an LED, like we have the heat on now, so it's highlighted in blue. That's our ITR Oasis burner. It's going right now. If we were running our air conditioner, you'd see the snowflake highlighted. We have a block heater that preheats your engine on cold mornings, turn that on or off. So when we turn on our block heater here, it turns on the outlet for the block heater, which is plugged in manually. So we wanna make sure our block heater is plugged in and turned on if we want preheat for our engine. Our battery state, uh, shows here that it's uh, currently at 13.2 volts and it gives you more detailed information on uh, what temperature and how what the temperature is in the bay. So this is a much more detailed information. How many amp hours remain? If we select the coach mode, it helps us uh, more quickly go and set or preset settings that you would normally have to maybe select manually. So if we're camping um, and we're outdoor unplugged, outdoor plugged in, you can then choose, so let's say you're outdoors and you're plugged in, <clears throat> it shows you that uh, that selection will enable your chargers and it will en enable your um, hydronic heat, which is your oasis. So just remember that if you're 
going to make a selection here, it's going to display what's going to be turned on over here. And then you have to activate that function. So whichever one I choose, I need to activate in order to turn those items on. Moving over to my floor heat, that's just the heat that comes off of the floor. We can turn those on here, or we can do it like this and turn them on to number 10. These are not temperature settings. They're just numbers. The higher the number, the longer the pattern that they're on. You can turn them off. It just go here or just down. So you're not really setting a temperature. You're just setting uh, the lower settings or just a few bars. It's going to be a lower heat setting. Uh, the more bars you put, the warmer the floor is going to be in the rear of the coach, front or mid. For the ventilation fans, those are your fantastic roof vent fans that pulls air out of the coach, kitchen, master bath, or schoolroom. We can turn them on or off. So now we can go to high, medium, or low for the kitchen uh, or the master bath. Whichever we select, we can then choose that to be on or off. There is one additional uh, function. If the fan, if you turn it on, but it doesn't come on, there may be moisture on the rain sensor. You can override that by pressing the rain sensor override. So anytime that you want to override uh, the fan and make it come on in case the rain sensor uh, won't allow it to come on, you can hit the rain sensor override and the fan will come on and stay on. The door locks, you can uh, toggle them on and off for the entry door or the cargo doors. The shades and TV lift can be controlled here, TV up, down, bed, bath, or living room, kitchen. You can select any one of those and then you can go in and uh, turn those on. Shades lift. And of course we can control all of our lightings in the bedroom, half bath, living room. We can turn them all on and off here. Or we can dim them however much we want to be bright or dim. And then the final icon is the gear icon. And the gear icon gives you selections for setting the clock, auto gen start settings, lithium battery statuses, climate options, and more. Floor heat scheduling, autofill configurations, network diagnostics, shows errors or things that may not have worked. And our next page is monitor diagnostics. If there was a monitor issue, we can see that here. We can customize our monitor if we like and miscellaneous settings. Um, the last page is we can view the clock, uh, test the touch screen. And that covers, uh, in general, the operation of these functions, but there's more detailed information in your owner's manual when we recommend that you go through and read uh, those in more detail. Just below that, you have your HVAC temperature sensor for zone two. To move into the half bath, you have to press the top of the handle and then pull towards you to release the door. In the bathroom is your breaker box on the left-hand side, your breaker box for the 120 volt and your fuses are all here. Starting on the right side are your 120 volt breakers that are operational when the coach is plugged in and the main breaker is turned on. All of the breakers are labeled for which appliance that they operate. So if any of them are tripped, let's say that the floor heat is tripped, you'll need to reset that towards the center. Sometimes when the breaker trips, it doesn't trip quite all the way over to the right. It might only be halfway. 
you'll still need to move it over to the right and then all the way back left to reset it. On the left hand side, you've got your sub panels for your inverters. The inverters supply 120 volts to the microwave, uh, the bed, bath, basement, refrigerator, front air conditioner, driver's slide out, and passenger slide out. So these breakers work in the same way. If they're tripped, they go down. You'll have to reset it by pushing it back towards the on position or a hub. There are additional spare fuses here. If you see any of these fuses are blown, for any one of the list showing on the left-hand side here, uh, you've got shades, patio lights, or any of those. If you come down here, if that isn't working, pull the fuse out, check it. If it needs to be replaced, make sure you match the number with the right one. Typically, the color of the fuse indicates the amperage. So at the ceiling here, we have a fantastic vent that pulls air out of the bathroom. If we need to turn that on, there's a control panel here similar to all the others in the coach. Just move to the fan selection and then go to the stool room, and then you would press either low, medium, or high. Uh, the fan comes on. If for any reason you need to override the rain sensor, there's an override on the panel that you can press in case the fan doesn't come on. Uh, the rain sensor might be slightly moist on the outside. You can override that rain sensor. To turn it off, just press fan off and it shuts off. If you remove the panel, you'll be able to see the fan. There is an additional 12 volt fuse here on the side. If the fan doesn't work, you wanna check your fuse and replace it if needed. In the event that the motor uh, doesn't come on or you need to open it and the panel's not working to turn it on, you can do it manually just by Rotating this crank will open the fan up and turn it on. Then manually close it and it will shut off. Put the panel on after you line up the tabs. Each tab is on the front to back end. Line the tabs up. The bathroom window has a release so you can open it right here. If you grab a hold of the handle, pull down. Now you'll have air movement through here. There's a screen. When you're finished, just lift up and push the handle to lock. Just to the right side here, we have your medicine cabinet. 120 volt um, plug. It's GFCI protected. Your sink, hot and cold. And below that, you have your extra storage space and uh, louvers. And there's a heater behind there that you can turn on here in the stool room. So you have your intervac connection here for your hose, or you have your sweep connection here, if you lift up, that also will go into your back. On the left hand side is your flush for your Dometic toilet here and water fill. As long as this light is green, you'll be able to flush. If this turns amber, you're at 75% full. In the black tank, if it turns red, you won't be able to flush. You'll have to empty your black tank first. Flush and add water are the blue buttons. There's extra drawer space here and down here. The bedroom sliding doors have a release here at the handle. So if you wanna close the bedroom doors, you'll release it. And then as you move it over, it locks into position. To unlock, just 
push down and once they move all the way to the end wall, they lock back in place. You can see it lock here. Just to the side of that is your HVAC temperature sensor control. You have your nightstand here with your charger for your phone. There's a, an opening at the top here so you could plug a cord in through that opening down into the inside where there's a 120 volt plug. Above here we have an additional drop down that you could connect uh, hoses for a CPAP machine for instance and then plug that in over here at that 120 volt outlet. You've got additional shades on both sides. They're electric. You just have to turn them on. There's an overhead control panel here. On this side of the bed is the same. You have your nightstand with 120 volt plug on the inside and phone charger. If you lift the bed up, You can access the table leaves and the extra dining room chairs. And below that are your controls for the bed slide. And way in the back is the air pump for the air mattress. So on the ceiling here in the bedroom, you have your CO2 detector. It operates similar to the smoke detector in the front. We're gonna show you that. Uh, but you should test this each week that you use the coach just by pressing this button in the center and holding it for a few seconds. You can hear the alarm uh, is sounding. Uh, that tells you that your batteries are working and batteries are charged and that the alarm would go off. If you don't hear that sound, Grab a hold and pull down and change your battery. After your battery's changed, then you put this back together and retest. This louver drops down the same as the one in the front. You'll have to pull this louver down. The magnets will release on this side and this will swing down this way and you can clean the filters in the rear air conditioner area here. We have another touch panel here. This touch panel is just a smaller version of the one you see here for the Silverleaf controls. Above that, you've got your slide out control for the bed slide in and out. Just to the left of that, you've got your audio visual cabinet for your television, for your roof mount satellite. Below that, you've got your drawers. And, uh, of course, your coach is equipped with, on this coach, it has the motion detector. Oh, there is an additional plug here uh, for USB and 120 volt. Moving back from the bedroom, if you needed to uh, exit the coach, in an emergency, there is an exit uh, window here. Uh, it gives you directions on the window uh, how to exit. Uh, each step here is pull the handle, slide the window open, push screen handle to release screen, and then escape. So basically that is this operation here. Slide the room, 
a slide the window and then push. So once you get the window all the way over, the screen is attached right here. So you just move the screen over and then you would escape out here if you need it. So as you enter the rear bath, you have the door here, pocket door, unlock to close and lock. Push down to open in the open position. That's your travel mode. So as we move into the bathroom, we'll, we'll uh, take a look at the washer and dryer. So your washer and dryer behind these two doors. The temp settings are there along with the time settings for your dryer here. For your washing machine, uh, Numar has this notice on here that you need to remove the outside drain, uh, which is for your gray tank, and make sure that it's connected to the sewer hose so that when you're doing your wash and it goes into a cycle for discharging water that all of that water doesn't continue to fill up the gray tank, but actually goes in the gray tank and then out uh, of the hoses. Uh, that way you won't have too much water to flood your gray tank because when that happens, it can actually come in your shower and fill up your shower. So just make sure that when you're using your washing machine that you have it connected to the sewer and that the gate valve is open so it drains. To access the washer and dryer connections for the water, turning on and off the water or plugging or unplugging the power supply, there's this cabinet door that you have to open to find those plugs and water supply. Yeah, the breakers inside uh, that connect to the washer and dryer are all GFCI protected, as well as the ones here in the bathroom. You've got, in the event that your washer or dryer does not operate, the GFCI may be tripped on that plug. So where those plugs go into the recept, you may have to reset outlet for the GFCI to go back to normal. The green light will go out if the recept is tripped, and then you'll need to reset it for the green light to come back on. So here you have your mirror and your sink, of course, cold and hot, on and off. You've got your storage drawers down below along with your cabinet here. There's 120 volt outlets here uh, on the top excess door. Just open to plug something in if you need. One on both sides. So I'm standing in the shower in the full bath in the back of the coach. And you can see that a blue light just came on. Well, I had my assistant turn on the aquamizer. So what does that do? If you put the aquamizer on in the systems panel and you turn it to recirculate, you're going to save the fresh water in your tank. So the fresh water that's in your tank is recirculating through here and across this area and back in the fresh tank. And until this turns red, the water is cold. Once this turns red, the water is hot, then you will be able to turn this back over to the left and then the water would be hot. So you could take a hot shower. 
basically helps you save water instead of just having the water come out until it gets hot you would lose several gallons once the system is on this is to the left you can adjust the uh, flow whichever uh, the handle or the overhead and you can adjust the hot and cold here there is a fold down seat here and behind me there's the dispensers for the uh, shampoo conditioner and body wash when you exit the shower you want to make sure to lock the door even though the magnets catch and hold it because that will keep the door from opening during transit. To turn the aquamizer off and on is just the press of a button here. Once I press that, the aquamizer light goes out. So I'm standing in the bathroom on the engine cover. So this engine cover may need to be removed to access the engine for service. The way that's done is these black plugs would be removed, all of the black plugs, and then there's a screw that you take the screw out and this panel lifts out. Before you lift it out though, this back panel would be released. Once you release the back panel, then you would be able to take the engine cover panel off. The engine panel, after the screws are removed, has an additional plug. The blue cord plugs into a heating strip so you have floor heat. So don't forget, we need to remove the blue plug when we take the engine cover off to put it back in place, put the engine cover back on and clip our panel back for travel. The closet has sliding doors that lock here. Just grab and pull to open. You can see we have our lighting control that panel uh, does not need to be removed unless it needs uh, to be serviced for a lighting circuit. Your safe, the safe comes with a code and you can reset the code as needed. To close the door, just slide. There's a storage area here for your shoes and more drawer space below that with more hanging space here there's also a uh, piece of paper with all of your model and serial numbers of the appliances in the coach so if you ever need to reference what kind or model and serial number you have for an air conditioner or any other appliance, they're all listed there on the wall. Once you close these doors, the interior light will go out and for transit or for travel, you want to make sure these doors don't slide while you're traveling. There is a little lock that you can flip down to lock the doors in place. So now they won't move. So if there was an emergency and you needed to exit the coach from the bathroom in the rear of the coach, Numar installs this exit door. The exit door has a deadbolt, so you would have to unlock that. And then to unlock the door handle, you'd have to unlock here. Now my door can be opened. Just grab the handle, open to escape. Now we don't want to jump, so Numar builds we built a ladder inside the inside panel of this door so we can remove this panel. And now we just loosen the Velcro here and flip our ladder down. 
So now I can just step out. to exit the coach. Just reverse that for, uh, procedure. If you want, just lift this up. You can store the ladder back in place. The Velcro back in front. And then put our panel back in place. and close our door. So once we've closed our door, made sure that it's closed all the way into, this, into the latch, we wanna lock the deadbolt and the door handle. Just to the right of that, you have your toilet flush and fill. We described that earlier in the half bath. Green light has to be on, and the amber light could be on lower LED, but if it's red on the lower LED, your black tank is full and you'd have to empty your black tank. So in the ceiling here, there's another fantastic vent uh, to pull air out of the coach here, and it works the same as the one and a half bath. And you can remove this uh, to access it if you need. This panel, uh, it's the same as the ones in, this, in the bedroom and in the living room to access the filters for your rooftop air conditioners. Just grab a hold of the side um, on the driver's side and pull down. That will release the magnet. And here's your filter here that you can take out and clean. It just is held in place by Velcro. Then put this back once you clean the filter and dry it. Okay, so we're at the front corner compartment uh, here at the driver's side. Press that button, that will open this door and you can access the generator slide module control. Uh, the generator hydraulic slide has a push button for extend and retract here. So up is extend. You want to make sure your leg is clear of the exhaust pipe when it opens. And now you can have access to your generator. If you step in here, I'll take a quick look at some of the controls in the front beside the generator. Uh, we have our uh, ECU uh, beside that, we have our horns, our hot water spigot. Uh, as long as the ITR Oasis is on, you can have hot water here. If that's turned on in the midpoint of the coach. To winterize it, there's a valve here. There's auxiliary air, as long as your coach is aired up. If it's not, you can just start your engine and let it air up, then you'll have auxiliary air here. That's your wiper washer fluid fill just open here to fill this is the filter for the itr oasis hydronic heating system that needs to be changed once a year and then of course this is your cummins generator uh, this panel is the access panel for service at the front we have our on off breaker switch as long as this is turned upward or on you'll have power when the generator's running inside. If it happens to be off, you'll have to reset it to the on position in order for you to have power when the generator's running. To start the generator, you just press this. This is the manual start and hold. And then to stop, just press down to stop. Uh, this is your uh, fluid fill for en the engine coolant. Just to the front uh, or the back side of the front is your headlight turn signal and your air horns are here. We'll move over to the other side. So on the passenger side of the generator, 
uh, starting here, you've got your HWH pump, your HWH manifold, and your solenoids here. Uh, these solenoids uh, can be open or closed in an emergency by just flipping the paddle uh, to the 90 degree position. And now that jack uh, for the leveling could be operated manually if needed. Or you can flip the paddle up here to uh, open or close. If you'd like to uh, flip that up like this, you can op operate this pushing it manually. Just above the generator, you've got your HVAC system. Uh, it's labeled with the amount of charge. This is for your air conditioning in the cockpit and heating in the cockpit. You can check the reservoir here for your, your fluid for leveling. Just unscrew the dipstick and pull it out. With the jacks retracted and the slide room extended, you can check your fluid level and add if you need. And when you're done servicing, you just go back around to the same door and you can retract the generator slot. The key has keep in mind that this, this generator slide can only open and close when the ignition key or button, push the start button, is in the accessory mode. It has to be pressed one time and then it glows orange to operate the slot. Go. There's a warning for lane change. If there's something in your lane, this small pyramid will uh, come on and light up. If these sensors are picking up any traffic in your lane, there's three sensors, front, mid, and rear, on the coach on both sides. <laughs> This mirror can be adjusted the same way as the other one on the driver's side. You'll notice there's a camera uh, that's mounted on the mirror so that when you turn your signal on or your right turn or left turn, that camera comes on and you can see in this lane before you make a turn. At the top of the door, you've got your door awning. The door awning 
and the two patio awnings can be controlled in the overhead above the driver's seat, or they can be controlled with a Gerard remote control. I'll show you that control. So this is your Gerard awning control. Uh, each awning has its own channel, one, two, or three. If you turn this on to channel zero, all of the awnings will operate at the same time in the same direction. So I can go to zero and I can press out and all three awnings will extend. I can turn on the LEDs. At any time, if I'd like to stop, I can press the stop button and then restart again, go out. They come to their full extension and they stop automatically. If you need to move one awning in separate from the others, just go to channel one, for instance, would be the first one you can go in and make your adjustments there. Or if you're ready to travel and you just want to move them all in, just go to channel zero again and press in and they'll all be in the same way. You turn the lights out again, just press the light LED button. This rod can be used to reach inside the front, in front of the wheel, there are three lanyards. They're colored green, silver, and red. You want to pull the silver one first, and that will release the air and moisture out of the tank for your coach, your chest, air system. So I release the air out of all three. You should do that every day that you operate your coach. So when you open the entrance door, your steps will automatically come out, but they will automatically close every time you close the door. If you would like to have the steps stay out, when you're going in and out of the coach. You can do that by pressing the overhead switch that says steps. You can turn that on. So if we close the door now, we turn the step switch on the steps will stay out. I'll turn the switch back on and I'll demonstrate how the steps have a built-in safety device so they don't 
hit you in the shin. If you would happen to be standing in front of the door when you opened it, um, or somebody else, and you opened it and the steps came out, and they just touch you gently in the leg, the steps stop. They have a built-in safety uh, that goes across the front of the step here, the bottom step. They also have a safety that if it hits anything as it's coming down and lifts up, the step will stop. So there's two safety uh, things uh, built in. Um, the safety switches for uh, the lift is on each side and one on the front. If you close the door, they'll retract. If for any reason the steps won't come out, there is a small button on the inside that we're going to show you now. HWH override. So if you press the override switch, it will override and extend the steps. Okay, so to lock and unlock the doors or the baggage compartments, we can use the key fob, or we can use the door handle, or we can use the keys. So you have three options. Uh, those options are displayed here for the door, for the baggage compartment, and of course the keys. So we'll go through the keys really quick here. If you want to lock or unlock the deadbolt here, you can do that from the inside with the black switch here. That's a manual lock and unlock. If you close the door, you want to make sure that that's retracted, otherwise you'll break the stem off. A long key that's labeled Trimark is the deadbolt. Lock and unlock. The short key that's labeled Trimark is the door lock. It's the red, the red button here, you can see it move up and down. So if you want to lock and unlock the door switch, you can see I'm doing that here. And then the baggage compartment is here. If you want to use the door handle to lock and unlock the door, the code is 123441. So if the door was closed, and it had been locked, which was number one for lock. So if I press and hold that down, that locks the door. To unlock is one, two, three, four, four, one. That unlocks the door. So I can open it up. Now, to unlock the door and the baggage compartment, it's just the same code, but number two. So to unlock both the baggage and the door, one, two, three, four, four, two. And that unlocks both. You can change your lock code because it comes to you from the factory as one, two, three, four, four, one. To do that on the steering column, there's a small switch that you will depress and you'll hear this go into a, a series of tones. You'll enter your code once and then twice, and then you'll have the new code uh, set as your master code to lock and unlock your door. On the inside of your entrance door is a screen. The screen is locked until you press this down. Now you can close your screen and slide. There's a screen that uh, retracts at the top. So to pull that down and have the full screen, you want to pull this down. That locks it into place. Now if I'm on the inside, I can 
press this down to end that. This, of course, is the door lock and unlock, and this is my disc. When you're done with the screen, if you want to retract it, just pull this down and slide this up. The door has two catches or latches. There's a soft close latch that's not meant for travel, and then there's the travel mode latch. If you close it gently, that, go, that goes into the first latch, but the door isn't closed all the way. It's just closed far enough so you don't slam it. If you want to close it for travel mode, you have to close it firmly into the second latch. So now you can see the door is flush. We're in the second latch. So just below your door awning, you've got your patio light. The patio light switch is inside. Uh, the door on the armrest at the passenger seat. The window awnings, you can open those uh, window awnings on the silver screen. You have your door here for your fuel fill for diesel. your docking lights, and your marker lights, and our first baggage door going back. Just press the blue button to open, then just open the door open. You've got, in this compartment, your Dometic freezer. The Dometic freezer refrigerator operates on either a 120 volt or 12 volt source. So if you don't have one source, it will operate on the other and will switch back and forth automatically. Just pull the tray out to the fill, the refrigerator. To learn more about uh, how to adjust your temperatures and your settings, um, how you can connect with your refrigerator freezer via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, just scan the QR code here. These are the uh, controls if you want to control it manually. Okay. <laughs> so this is your control if you want to control it manually, temperature up and down. There's a USB port here you can plug into. Just refer to your owner's manual or scan the QR code for more information on those controls. These are again soft closed doors. You don't need to slam them, just touch and then they'll pull closed. There's an easy glide tray here. To open and close the tray, just press the button here. Newmar provides an auxiliary air hose. As we showed you earlier, you can connect that to your air supply in the front or back of the coach. This is the outside entertainment center. Just lift to open. You've got your television, your sound bar. Um, you can choose uh, to have the sound bar uh, connected to your interior radio by choosing house mode on the radio, or you can select TV to the left, and again, dash radio to the right to have the speaker work with either one of them.
Just above that is a 120 volt outlet and two USB ports for charging. This can be moved out and there's a magnet that holds it in. So you just kind of grab a hold and pull and then you can adjust this outside here however you like. And then when you're finished, just push it back in and all it matches the magnet. Feel that magnet pull it tight. And then when you're finished, just close the door. Our next compartment back is another easy glide tray. Numar includes two long screws. Uh, if you need to have an emergency uh, operation of the full wall slide, which is uh, HWH operated, these two screws are used to manually retract the slide if it won't retract with the pump motor. Just refer to your operator's manual for more information on how those would be used. At the very top of the slide here is a slide top awning. That fabric automatically opens and closes on top of the slide out to keep rain and debris off of the top of the slide. Uh, when you're going to run the rooms in, you just want to make sure there's nothing uh, underneath between the fabric and the top of the slide. Just to the uh, rear and between the window is another 360 degree camera. And behind the window is a security light. In this compartment, uh, it's just a manual tray that you can open for storage. We have our additional tile in case you need to replace an interior floor tile. Uh, those are included. They match the color and the lot number of what you have in the coach. You have your inner back system. This system uh, can be plugged in out here as well as inside just by lifting this up and plugging the hose in here. On the back side of the frame rail are the controls for your cameras both of your slide outs that are electric, along with your shade controls and dry contacts, as well as the 120 volt outlets here. And this of course is the, the uh, door close for this compartment. Way in the back, you've got your ITR Oasis, hydronic heating system. And on the back wall, you've got additional Silverleaf electronics. In our next compartment back, we have our pegboard compartment. Uh, this is storage for anything like tools, cleaning materials. Another marker light here. Another lane warning assist that shows up in the mirror on both sides, docking line. And in between these two rear wheels, you have your HWH jack that you can visually check before traveling to make sure that it's retracted. You've got another slide popper awning on top of this slide out. Moving back to the smaller door, you've got your DEF tank hill here. And if for any reason the coach would need to have additional air or uh, 
the air was not working to fill up an airbag, you can uh, refer to this uh, emergency suspension air fill, uh, and you can add air to your coach suspension here. This is the emergency exit door that you can exit out of the coach from inside. We'll show you that when we're back in the bathroom later. And our last compartment door is your chassis batteries and filters. These chassis batteries power the cockpit area. The cockpit area controls your dash, wipers, blowers, headlights, and it also operates the full wall slide on the opposite side, which is your HWH pump. That's the 200 amp one here. So to have the batteries connect to the coach, these have to be on or in the down position. If you're going to store your coach, you want to flip these to the up or zero for storage. But for operating, you'll need to have these on. Just above the batteries, there's a additional fuse for your solar panel on the roof. And chassis fuses are located here. If you need to look at the chassis fuses to see the codes or which ones they are, just rotate this counterclockwise, remove it, there's spare fuses under here, and the label for each location. These, of course, are your air dryer and fuel filter. Uh, engine compartment is here. It can be opened and closed manually, right here at the bottom. So you want to have one hand on the on the lever pulling down. If you want to have one hand up here, because when it opens, it will push towards you. And this is our engine compartment. Starting on the right hand side, we have our engine coolant. The eyeglass should show the fluid level here. It should be red. You can fill it here, but you want to make sure that you don't touch this cap or open it when the engine's warm. This is another auxiliary here that we showed you had one in the front. Here's another one in the rear. This is your engine oil fill. This is your engine oil dipstick. This is your uh, chassis hydraulic system oil here with the dipstick. You can turn that and check the level. This is your 120 volt outlet for your block heat preheating your engine on cold days. This is your ITR Oasis overflow bottle here. You can add fluid here, the Century fluid uh, is what Numar uses. You can get that from Numar. This is an air filter indicator. This is your air filter. If it's needing a replacement filter, this yellow diaphragm will be up in the red zone when the engine's running. As long as it's in the green, the air filter is good. This is your transmission fluid fill and dipstick here. And when you're done servicing this area, just reach up and pull down with both hands and close. At the top of the gear cap, you've got your marker light. Halfway down, you've got your brake light, your third brake light, and your rear view camera. Down here, you've got your license plate, and uh, this is for your uh, additional tow brake if you have, uh, for Air Force One, if you have that. And this is, of course, your Bargman plug. So at the top corner on the driver's side cab is a grill. That's your air for your uh, combustion air inlet, and that has to be free uh, flow. So if there's anything blocking that, you want to clear it, 
Same goes for these radiators. Uh, this is for your uh, cooling radiators for your engine. So anything that's behind there, if it's uh, blocking airflow, you have to remove that. This, of course, is for your lane change warning, uh, as well as the one in the middle and the front. This is your DEF fill, or you can use the one on the other side, either one. Just above that is your air vent for your dryer. This is a storage compartment for your sewer hose. And again, in between the wheels, you've got your HWH leveling jack. Just make sure that that's retracted before you travel. You've got your window awning there. Again, that can be controlled with the silver leaf screen. Another slight top oh, remote. Right. Right. Moving here, we've got another docking light, marker light, lane warning, and this is our water bay compartment. This is our water compartment. In order to start using water and have water in our fresh tank, we want to first insert the filter in the filter housing. So Umar provides you a filter wrench. So you'll put this wrench on the filter here, and then you'll go up. And then this is this is tightening. This is loosening. So you want to loosen it, and then you can remove the canister. And we've water tested it, but this is where your filter would go in, and then you put this back. Now you want to tighten your filter right here, tighten it, and now you're ready to filter all the water that goes into your house. So you'll have to hold this hose out and connect it to a water source, not more than 60 psi. Once that's connected, and you turn on the water, all the water that comes in the coach will go through this filter, okay? So it'll go through this filter and then you'll have to choose where it goes. So you can choose to go straight into your coach, which is called city supply, or you can choose fresh water tank here or fresh water tank here. This is the manual fill. So in other words, as long as the pressure is on coming in, it's going to be manually filling my tank. If I go to the upper one, freshwater auto tank fill, then it only fills to about a 95% level. Um, it also gives you city supply. So I can have it on the upper one, fills the tank automatically, gives me water pressure inside, or I can choose city supply only, so that I've only got water going into the coach, or I can manually fill it in this position down here. So once I've made that selection, I'll have water in those areas. Um, this would probably be the selection that I would make because it's going to automatically fill my water tank and give me water inside of my coach. If you, and you will need to enable the autofill in on the silver leaf panel. Here's your autofill right here. You can do it on the silver leaf panel inside or here just by pressing this on and off here. Your water pump can be turned on and off here as well. You would not have your water pump on if you had city supply hooked up to your hose, you wouldn't really need to turn your water pump on. But if you're dry camping, yes, you would need to have your water pump turned on. Just above the canister, there is a little red button. So if you're going to remove this, you want to release the pressure inside, you can press that button so that when you take this off, you don't have a lot of water pressure. 
uh, coming out at you. Just above that is a shower and you can turn it on hot or cold uh, to clean items out here in this area. You'll notice here there's two drains. These are the hot and cold low point drains for your water lines that go inside. So when I'm ready to winterize, I would open these to the up position on both and that drains all the water out of my water lines. And then I would close them and I would be able to winterize. So winterizing is done in this area here and by connecting this hose to a winterizing solution. We'll have to remove the cap, loosen the uh, retainer, pull the plug off, insert that into your potable antifreeze, and then you'll reverse these two handles, turn the water pump on here, and that will pull, pull the antifreeze solution up in the coach. Then you'll need to go in the coach and open up the uh, all of the water faucets, flush the toilets, and turn on all the appliances. If you forget how to do that, right here are the directions that you can refer to step-by-step step for the ones that we just covered. Once you've done that, you'll put your cap back on here, tighten it, and just store this hose back in this area here. Now we've learned how to have water, fresh water, in your coach or filling our tank. We're going to understand how to empty the tanks when they're full or any time. This hose is where we can choose to have the effluent come out of the gray tank and the black tank, or we can choose this. So we'll cover this one first. So the way this one works is this hose is extended through the floor here. And then we connect this hose to our sewer connection. So we'll need to remove the cap. Usually the large cap, we remove that and put that into our sewer connection. And then all of the gray tank and black tank effluent will go through this box into this hose, but we have to turn on the valve to do that. That gate valve is right here and we have to pull this towards us in order for that effluent to travel through this macerator. So once we open that up, we can again open the valve, choose the tank you want to empty. Once you open that valve, this will move. You'll notice these actually travel towards you. This one is for the black tank. This one's the gray. But once you turn this on, that valve will open and turn on the SantaCon until the tank is empty. You can tell when the tank is empty uh, by your panel here. If you want to get more of the effluent out of the tank, you can tilt the coach as long as it's running. You would press tilt and then the coach leans this way and all of the effluent in the tanks drains to this side and out of the macerator. First press tilt, then start. When you're done emptying the tanks, then you press cancel and the coach will reload. So that's the way that you empty through the SantaCon. When you're done emptying the tanks, you want to rinse the tanks, uh, you can do that. You'll need to open either one of these 
gray tank rinse or black tank rinse and insert a hose in either one or you can do one and then the other. Once the hose is running, it will flush the inside of the tank and that effluent will come down here and go out the hose. So you can flush one, then the other. Here are the instructions for either one. Black tank, rinse, open gate, valve, turn on RV Santa Con when used. So the same as when we open those, when we're rinsing these, we want to have this turned on so that effluent pumps out. Once it's completely empty, you're done rinsing, you pump it out, you'll turn this off and you'll come back down here and manually you'll have to push this gray gate valve in towards the center of the coach until it closes. If you're, if you're not going to use the RV Santa Con to empty your tanks, then you would want to connect the hose here and go through the same position to the sewer and you can open this gate valve here and turn on either one of those valves. If you're in an area that you want to open these valves manually, you can pull this and you can then open either gate valve that you want manually. You can still rinse the tanks in the same way once these are open, just by inserting the hose in either one of these, but you won't need to turn the SantaCon on because you're doing it manually. When you're finished draining the tanks, either with the manual or SantaCon, just store the hose back up here and put your floor cap back in place. Cake. So one additional low point drain that we didn't talk about when we were talking about the drains inside the coach was there's an additional low point drain for the freshwater tank. That's right here. So to open the low point drain for the freshwater tank and drain all the water out of the fresh tank, you just grab a hold of this valve here and open it up. When you're done, close it. Go. So just to the left side here, we have a manifold block. Some people call it a mano block. And you've got a spigot here. This, of course, is for hot water tap. If you want to have hot water, uh, you can put a hose on here and have hot water rinse out here if you need it. But the mano block is designed so that if you had an issue with an appliance, that you wanted to change an appliance, or you want to turn the water off to one of them because it's going to be swapped out or had a leak, you can do that individually here for the shower, ice maker, washer. So this, these are all cold water and these are all hot water here. So if I wanted to shut the hot water off to the shower, I can do that right here. Now there's no more hot water. So I can do that here, I can turn that off or on. Same with the cold to the shower, I can turn that off. So now there won't be any water to the shower. When I'm done doing service or maintenance, I can turn those back on. So I can do it individually uh, for any of the ones that are labeled here. When I'm done using the water hose here, it has a electric motor retract here. You just press that and the hose will retract. In addition to the operations that we've shown you, the home screen has all the tanks. The water was the on off for the pump or autofill. I can turn my security lights on either the driver or passenger side. I can also turn the generator on. And of course, we showed you how to do the tilt. There is a uh, 
reel up here for paper towels. So in our cord reel compartment, we obviously have the cord reel, but we have our cable connection here for part cable. Because we have power going through the transfer switch, those, those power uh, lines are indicated here in the monitor. So we have the RV monitor. So when we're plugged in, it's going to tell us whether we have power on line one and line two, and it's going to tell us how much in voltage and amperage. Um, there is a fault screen that you can scroll up and down and view any faults that you might have had. Behind the cord reel is a cover, an ABS cover. That cover can be removed. It's velcroed in place, so you can grab a hold of that cover. Release one side first, and then you can pull this cover. So once you remove the Velcro cover, you can see the fuses, they're all labeled with a number. They all correspond with the label here. So each fuse has a number for what it is. So if you have uh, any um, radio, cockpit lights, uh, entrance steps, or anything that's not working, you can come back here and locate the number of the fuse, and then you can go and change that fuse right here. In addition to the fuses, there are resettable fuses below the ones that uh, are replaceable, and there's mini breakers to the right of that. Above that, you've got your house battery disconnect and your charge bridge solenoid. Inside the compartment, just in front of the cold reel, you've got your ITR oasis. And this is your hydronic furnace, and it also heats your water. In the event there was a failure of the touch panel for your silver leaf, and you needed to turn this on, Numar includes an additional manual control that you can plug into your silver box right here with the cord that's supplied, and you can operate it manually. So, in order to uh, to operate it manually or with the silver leaf panel inside, you have to have it turned on to power. So this has to be turned on, and you'll see the power light on. Once any of the other functions are in operating or operation, you'll see a green light here. But then down here where the igniter is or the one below it, these are red. If any of these turn red, that means that that igniter or those other items need to be checked. In addition to that, if you see any red lights on this panel here, they should all be green, but if you do see a red light, you'll need to take the cover off of this panel and check the fuses inside. This is the window here where you can see your flame burning. The flame can be kind of a bright orange. This is your cold water inlet, and that's your hot water outlet. And this is your engine loop that keeps the fluid inside from your engine so that when you come to a stop, you'll still have hot water to travel. In our next baggage compartment, we have uh, another easy glide tray, that's the same one as the opposite side, it's also moved out this way. You can see here there's a water line that has a shutoff here. This is the water line that goes into the slide, the full wall slide. This can be turned off and on here. There's another pet cock valve there that can be turned off, which feeds the hot water supply to the front gen slide area that we showed you earlier. In our next compartment, we have the same easy glide tray that we had on the other side, open and close. In our battery and inverter 
compartment. This powers up our coach on 12 volt. And the inverters charge that battery as well as they convert the energy in that battery to 120 volts in the sub panel for our kitchen and appliances. The LED indicators here on both tell you what is happening. If you have an LED light that says fault, then you would go over here and press this button on the left to clear or reset the fault. Same on this one, they're both the same model type. The BMS or battery management system for this battery is the white box on the back wall. The BMS can be turned off or on in the overhead with the blue uh, LED button. That same blue button, if you can see my fingers that are blue down here, there's the same blue button here. You can turn it on and off here. This is given a 12 volt power by this plug here. So as long as your coach is plugged into 120 volt power, this light should be green and that gives this the power to stay awake if it needs to charge the battery in low voltage situations. Whenever this battery gets to a 10% level, the BMS will automatically shut off. So if that happens, you want to make sure your generator's on or you're plugged into power so you can recharge your battery. In order to charge that battery, the inverter settings have to be turned on to charge, not just invert. And you do that in the silver leaf panel in the overhead. There is a squeegee uh, wash brush for your windshield here. Moving forward, you have another docking light here, a marker light. You have your fuel fill. It fills the same tank as the other side. The slide out on both sides has a gap at the top and bottom. This needs to be about 3 eighths before you run that slide or extend it out. If you see this gap is too small or touching, you'll need to find a more level place for the coach before you run these slide outs or extend them. In our next compartment forward, we have all of the fuses for the cockpit area here and here. These fuses are the ones that uh, Numar added. These are the ones from the chassis manufacturer and they're all labeled either on the panel right here, the word is labeled. If you need to check, let's say the seat heat isn't working, you can check those fuses under this black panel. These are all from the chassis manufacturer. And they're all labeled on the back side here. So for instance, if the seat wasn't heating, you would check fuse number 23. Uh, you come down here to number 23 take your tool here, pull the fuse out. If you need a spare fuse, they're all here to replace. When you're done with that, changing the fuse, then just put your panel back on. Okay. If any of these fuses are blown, there's a small red LED light that will appear uh, just above it, and that red LED light will tell you that that fuse needs to be replaced. If you need to replace a fuse, make sure you match the same size over here. And you'll have a spare fuse that you can take out and insert. Uh, all the fuse numbers are labeled at the front 
even the ones that don't look like they have a number, it's engraved on the front side so you can see what it is. UMAR puts all the spare fuses in a slot that matches the fuse size number. This again is the HWH front generator slide, extend and retract to open and close the front part of the pit. 